uh, want to take opportunity to welcome our YouTube audience. Thank you guys, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in wherever you are. Give me, yeah, that'll, that'll work. Uh, <laughs> I said something. Yeah, come join us. There you go. Uh, we'd love to have you. We are located at 1221st Avenue in the city of Coralville, Iowa, right off of I-80 and 1st Avenue. Uh, at the Radisson Hotel and Conference Center. Lots of room, beautiful setting. We'd love to have you come down. We're here on the on every Sunday at 10 a.m. and then the first Sunday at both 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. We do have a s evening service on that Sunday evening. So you're more than welcome to join us. We'd love to have you. We've got a warm place of fellowship. We've got a warm seat of welcome for you. And if you're not uh, affiliated with a local church, you're looking for a local church, come down, check us out. We'd love to take the opportunity to show you how good God has been to us. So take advantage of the opportunity that you have 2019 is right upon us don't go into 2019 the same way you left 2018 go higher and go stronger would you welcome our YouTube audience amen and also for our first-time guests we're certainly delighted that that you're here uh, those of you haven't seen in a little while but we're glad that you're here glad you took an opportunity to come out and hang out with us so hope we enjoy yourself would you welcome our first-time guests as well amen um, Give me 30 minutes, please, if you would, 30 minutes on the clock. I, I want to uh, uh, remind the men, we do have men of honor. Uh, I'm still surprised by the, the amount of men that did, don't know that. And so uh, Jay Smith, is, along with others, have done a great job trying to get the word out. Uh, that is the second Saturday of every month uh, in, in my home. So I would love to have you come down and join us. If you don't have anything else going on other than sleep, why don't you come out and hang, hang out with us on a Saturday? Uh, we'll feed you, we'll take good care of you, and we'll give you both word and sustenance. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Ooh. Ooh, 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 thank you. I'm trying to get some ooh in me right now, so appreciate your prayers. <laughs> amen. Amen. I woke up yesterday and was challenged, and the challenge is still going on, but I'm not moved by what I feel. That's right. Right. I'm moved by what I believe. Yes. How you doing, Ms. Coleman? Good to see you. Glad that God has got us on the brink of a, of a new year. And so uh, I'm going to go ahead and get right into what the Lord has for me. Uh, he kind of adjusted it. And now that I see the kids in, aren't in here, I can see why a little bit. Uh, I want to help you out this morning if I can. Um, I'm not going to talk about this. I was a little bit um, told my wife. As we were coming in, I said, I'm not sure that the Lord would have me share this, but now I've gotten clearance from him. And this is just for you to write down. You meditate on it. Uh, this is what the Lord is going to be taking us to. And uh, you can call it the prophetic word for this house. I believe that's what it is for 2019. And what it is is simply the phrase restoration to harvest restoration to harvest you could say from restoration to harvest but restoration to harvest and i know that's right in line with what he's been dealing with us about and the potential of every seed for 2018 and those seeds are starting to grow in us i know that now there's some things that the lord wants to restore in our lives before we can ever expect to see a full harvest there has to be restoration of the soil there has to be some things that take place i mean we've many of us have come through 2018 and beyond before that fragmented and broken and our lives in many cases are dry and and for whatever reason, we have to make sure that we have the ability to receive the, everything that God has for us. Can you say amen to that? Amen. And he's got more than what we've seen. Uh, that'd be, that's a good place to say amen. He's got more than what we've seen. You've got better health out there. You've got better social lives out there. You've got better relationships out there. They're real. They're genuinely there. And so, but those things have to be dealt with and restored in our life. Now, that doesn't mean that that's what I'm going to preach on next Sunday. I'm just telling you that in, in preparation for your heart so you can pray about it and you can get ahead of me and God can start revealing it to you and just uh, we'll get there together. Would you pray with me this morning and we'll get going. Father, I thank you so much for your great grace and mercy that rest upon my life and upon this house. The ministry of the gospel is such a prolific and powerful thing, Lord God, that it, we don't want it to go under 
underwhelmed. We want it to be overwhelming. We want it to just come to us like a flood, like a river, Lord, and just bring us to a place of tr total trust and reliance on you. God, allow our minds to be renewed to the word of the living God. We don't want to be conformed to this world. We simply want to know that where we are is where you want us to be and that moving forward, God, you've got a great plan of destiny for us that we can't get to without you. So we yield and submit ourselves to the living God. You are he, you are him who has called us to be to this place today and to do your will. Lord Jesus, we submit our lives to you today. Holy Spirit, have your way in this place. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, can you say amen? amen. Turn with me to the 12th chapter of the book of Romans, please. Romans 12. I'm going to move through this expeditiously. Romans 12. Romans 12 and verse 1. If you, if you can put the King James Version up there, that would be great. Many of you are more familiar, as am I, with the King James Version. My wife alluded to it. Matter of fact, she didn't allude to it. She read it uh, out when she was reading for the offering. And so this, again, goes right in line with what the Lord has laid on my heart today. Romans 12. I'm going to read it from the expanded Bible. I'm only going to read the first two verses. When you have it, say Amen. Still see some hands scrolling and some pages turning. So therefore, from the expanded Bible, Romans 12 and 1. So therefore, brothers and sisters, since God has shown us great mercy, I beg or I urge and appeal to you to offer your lives or yourselves. The King James Version says your bodies as a living sacrifice to him. Your offering must be only for God, holy and pleasing to him, which is the spiritual or authentic or appropriate, reasonable way for you to worship. Verse two, where I want to focus today, do not be shaped by or conformed, pressed into a mold by this world age. Instead, say instead, be changed within, transformed by a new way of thinking or changing the way you think, the renewing of your mind, in other words. Then you will be able to decide or discern Test and approve what God wants for you. What is God's will? You will know what is good and pleasing to him and what is perfect. Again, verse two, do not be shaped, conformed to or pressed into a mold by this world age. Instead, be changed within, say within, transformed by a new way of thinking or changing the way you think. Huh? You've got to do that. The renewing of your mind, then you will be able to decide. Many people can't make decisions because their mind has not been renewed. And what we do, we find ourselves way too often uh, falling into a pattern, habitual pattern of uh, mediocrity or, or just a lack of um, just a lack of effort. In other words, uh, let's look at it like this. If, if 2019 is going to be, you can write this down, 2019 for all of us is a new season. It absolutely is a new season. It absolutely is. Is there anybody who on day after tomorrow when you wake up, clock strikes 12.01 a.m., uh, anybody in this room going to still be living in 2018? Would you raise your hand, please? So you have no option to be living in an old season when a new season is upon you. And anytime you try to live in a new season, I mean old season, excuse me, when a new season is upon you, you find yourself coming up short. Come on now. And what, what has happened and what is continuing to happen uh, with God, last week we celebrated the Christmas season. And I told you it's the Christ Christmas or Christ more. It is more of Christ. Christ enters the earth to bring about a change. Say change. change. When he comes to the earth, he comes, he brings a change. And anybody who does not accept it is still living in the old life. Yeah. Hear me well now. Now, what happens is you, you and I, we, I, know, I know our world society makes us think that we have a choice. You really don't have a choice when it comes to Jesus Christ. Oh, I wish I could get a better amen. You really don't. People say, well, I don't, I don't, I don't want to live for him. Okay, but understand this. The choice has been made. Jesus said, I said, excuse me, the Father said, I set before you life and death, right? Blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose what? Life. The choice has been made. All you have to do is believe it. Are you feeling me this morning? And many people equate choosing and belief as, as, as uh, in two different categories. The greater of the two is belief, not the choice. Help me, Lord. When I believe, when my belief system is lined up with the word of God, the choice is easy. But until my belief system gets lined up with the word of God, it's hard for me to make a choice. 
And usually what I do is make the wrong choice. Okay. So 2019 is here. It's a new season. And write this down. It requires change. You're going to have to change. How many of you are like me? Most of us, a lot of us don't write checks anymore. I, I was flipping through my checkbook the other day and realized I write checks to the same, same people, right? You feeling me? Same people. I don't, you know, it's like, when y'all going to start accepting credit card, debit card, whatever? Because I'm tired of writing these checks. I'm so, I, this speaks to something else. I won't go there right now, but I'm going to get there because it's part of my message. Speaks to me not wanting to change. So what I do is, is, is when I start writing a check, I have to be mindful when I write the first check of January, I got to make sure I don't write 20 what? 18. Y'all 18. been there before, so you know what I'm talking about. So what I have to do is I have to, I have to intentionally set my mind to make a change. But if I don't make a change, then what am I going to do? I'm going to write a 2018 on there. And if you like me, I ain't trying to go back and scratch it through or, you know, tear the check up and write void. So I just kind of line through it, make a little mark and write 19 over it like I really meant to do that. And I write, you know, my initials to make sure because I'm cheap. I don't want to write a new. You, you, ain't, you ain't hear what I'm saying. So, so what <laughs> the better thing to do is to put my mind in agreement with where I'm already going. And not be stuck on 2018. 2018, ladies and gentlemen, you got two more days to affect change in 2018. And if you don't affect the change, if you set, 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 uh, what they call them, um, th what is it called? Resolutions. If you set your resolutions in 2018, that's why I don't believe in setting resolutions because I never keep them. I never keep them, Roger. I never keep them, Randy. I never keep them. When I, I don't set resolutions. I stopped setting resolutions probably when I got born again because I realized, you know what? I need to stop lying to myself Amen. or lying to other people, Amen. right? I'm not trying to impress anybody, but I just don't live out resolutions. But I live by faith, and that faith I live is by the Son of God. So in order for me to do that, I've got to recognize that in order for me to be successful, change is required. Change is not an alternative. Understand that. OK, next thing in, in 2019 and this new season is going to bring new challenges. We read this morning in Lamentations three that his mercies are new every morning, but so are the challenges of the enemy. They're new. If he couldn't trip you up in 2018 with, you know, in your in your thought life, you know, you know, all of us stumble and fall. Every last one of us has come up short. And all the rest of y'all need to stop lying. So we've all come up short, including myself. But the reality of it is not a matter of uh, we're not defined. We're, we're not defined by our mistakes. We're defined by our successes, by our ability to get back up again. Right. The Bible says that a righteous man falls how many times? Seven. But what happens at the end? He gets back up again. So you can't look at 2018 as as a laundry list of what I didn't accomplish, didn't do. Your life is not defined by the calendar change of the year. Your life is defined by a long season that God has placed us in. And it's not a matter of being long as in terms of the duration. It's long in the sense that this is what God has given you and I as a time stamp for a for for our transitional period from here to eternity. Some of us will have, like my wife alluded to, our daughter had 18 years of longevity. And at the, at the end of, of her time period, you know, the date aside, at the end of it, that was her time allotted. She moved into another reality. Are you hearing me this morning? Some of us, some people have had 18 years. Some have had one year. Babies die. All these things seem horrific. But the reality of it is, is that we as people of God have to understand that he gives us time to be able to accomplish and make change. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So what kind of new challenges is it going to bring? Number one, faith challenges. Your faith is always going to be challenged. Your faith is always going to be challenged. It's supposed to be challenged. Paul writes in more than one place. He said the trying of our faith works patience. But let, let patience do what? Have its perfect work in you. That you may be perfect and entire, entire, wanting nothing. Can you say amen to that? So faith challenges are going to come. They're supposed to come. If your faith is not being challenged, you're not living life right. Here's the other side of that. You can write this down as a subtext to that. The reason why I read Romans 12 and 2 is because, you know what? If you want 
here's what most people do that, that, that don't understand some of the stuff that you learn here at LifePoint. They just wake up and exist from one event to the next. See, see, that's called conforming to the world. What the world will do, the world will press you into a mold unless you resist against it. Let me give you an example of what I mean by that. The world will press you into a mold called depression. Because you look around you, you don't see the finances that you need. You don't see the health that you need. The, the health, the healing hasn't come. You don't see your children doing right. You don't see this. And it just pushes you and it wants to cause you to, to let your mind think that nothing is working even though you are a believer. Amen. And if you allow yourself to fall into that mold, it will press you right out. It's, it's, like, it's like the old, anybody know the old, uh, I'm not a baker, my wife doesn't bake either. But, you know, they used to, I used to watch my mom, she would put, uh, uh, had a little press that would lift, the handle would lift down, and it would have a decoration like a star on it. Some of you ladies know what I'm talking about. Some of you guys might know what I'm talking about as well. And she put the, the, the mixture in there, and she'd press down, and it'd come out looking like a star. Or she might have squares, whatever the occasion was. Well, what happens is the world will try to fit you and I into a mold of its choosing, and it will put enough pressure on you unless you fight back. It will push you to come out being a complainer, Amen. being a doubter, being sick. I got physical challenges going on this morning, but I choose not to be sick. Somebody say, are you lying? No, I'm calling those things that be not as though they were. God is the one that quickens the dead. What am I doing? I'm fighting against that so I don't go through 2019 like I went, came out of 2018. It's a new season. It requires change. Say amen to that. So the next thing after faith challenges, you're going to have feelings challenged. Your feelings are going to be challenged. Am I right about it? You're not going to feel like coming to church. Been going to church all your life. Put your feelings to the side and get your happy self up. Give me, a, give me a microphone, please. Give me a handheld. This is going to irritate me, so I don't want to do it. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Thank you. You, you know, your, your, your feelings are just that. They are feelings. They do not run your life. Stop letting them. You know, you know the best way for you to have a bad, bad uh, start to, you know, to your new year is to forget that other people don't control you. That's the best way. Because if you forget that other people don't control you, guess what you're going to do? When people come up against you, they push up against you, they say something ugly to you because they're going to do it, that's what they do. And they're being used by our enemy to control the body of Christ. I can't get away from this, so I'm going to say this. By the Spirit of the Lord, I woke up this morning, I didn't think I was going to say this. But the Lord said that we ha we're going to have to learn to pray once again to the Lord of the harvest. And, and we've let it slip in our, in our gatherings. And I'll get into that more later. Some of you know what I'm talking about. But we're going to have to wake up with an intent or go to bed with an intent or do something different with an intent to pray to the Lord of the harvest. That he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Ladies and gentlemen, it is harvest time. Amen. And I'm not talking about just the wheat in the, in, the, in the fields or the corn in the fields. I'm talking about the lives of people need to be harvested for the kingdom. It is that time. Amen. Glory to God. So your feelings will be challenged. I'm going to tell you something else. You're going to be, the, a third one, another one is going to be failures. My life is not de de defined by my failures or my shortcomings, whatever you want to say. I don't like to use the word failure because to me it's like, it's like uh, uh, I've, I've heard a couple people say this, but, you know, uh, I was listening to, matter of fact, I was listening to Terry um, Foy and she was talking about, uh, one particular inventor, and you guys heard all the stories, so I'm not going to get into detail with that. But it's not a matter of me trying to do something a thousand times. I've just figured out a thousand ways that it won't work. You tried that 900 times. Well, 901 might be the time. I, I've been given and given and given, and nothing's nothing's happened. Well, let's let's not stop. You know, let's not stop in in mid process. Let's just make sure that what we're doing is not just it's not just ritual, and we're not just doing it as we're conformed to the world. Listen, when when I come up here with a shimmy and a shake and a dance at offering time, if I come up here doing it, I want it to be something that comes straight from my heart, and I don't care what anybody thinks about me because I'm trying to break the pattern of failure. Amen. Say amen to that. 
The other thing, future. Your future is going to be challenged. Oh, dear God, I could stay here all day long. Your future, the, the reality of what you're living in today did not, did not happen today. It happened some time ago. You know, uh, just for sake of, of, of somebody maybe who doesn't know my wife and I, I'm just going to say it like this. You know, uh, there's, a, there's a, a rag in there. Would you give it to me? It's on the back side of that. TJ will get it, honey. TJ will get it on the back side. Um, my wife and I, and just set it up here for me, please. My wife and I have been married 35 years. You guys have known this. So those of you that give me a little bit of latitude that already heard this. But we didn't get here yesterday. Our marriage, our marriage didn't start working five years ago. Are you feeling me this morning? Yeah. Our marriage started working not at the altar, not when we said I do. It didn't happen like that. I wish it did, but it didn't. How much time do I have? It, 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 didn't, it, didn't, it didn't start. I mean, that was the starting point, Roger. But our, our marriage was not working, and it was not working very well. We were failing miserably, right? And then, then... A new season came. God, help me this morning. And a new season came and I didn't see it. Jerry, I didn't see it when it came because I was too naive to recognize it. So when I recognized it, we started, when we recognized it, we started making better decisions and changes started happening. So what we started doing was we got off the little rat, the little uh, uh, hamster wheel. Thank you. Somebody's in the spirit. <laughs> got up the hamster wheel of life and decided we're going to take this thing a little bit slower. God, help me this morning. A little bit better. We're going to make better decisions before we just jump in with everybody else, what everybody else is doing. And we still got friends today who are still doing the same thing after all these years. And listen, I'm going to tell you something else. They might still be together, but I guarantee you, they ain't got no friend like, like she and I. I got this girl is my friend. I, see, see, when I get this age, I need a friend. <laughs> you know, we, we kid around sometimes. We talk about it, you know. I, I love my babies and my kids, you know. I love them, you know. But I knew, we knew there was a day coming when they was going to move, Kelsey. And if they move and we don't like each other, we in trouble. Because we got a whole house full of not liking each other. And there's no patter, pitter, patter of little feet. Are you feeling me? But what happened was we start, when we changed, the new season hit us, it now affects where we are in 2018, soon to be 19. I have no desire now to go back and get a new friend in life. I got that. What I now need to do is find out how to make the friend and I more successful in 2019. And if I look at my failures and just say I'm stuck, I can't change it, I'm not the one required to change. God will make the change if I make the effort. But I, it starts with me changing my, say, mind. You got to change your mind. You got to change your mind. Are you all right? So, your future will be challenged. Don't matter. It's supposed to be challenged. When we don't have our, we don't have our uh, uh, poster up. But exactly. You have to know. Thank you. Another one in the spirit. You got to know that God's got this. I got a hand clap over here. Let me try. You got to know that God's got this. If he, look, and I'm going to use this English intention. If he ain't got this, we in trouble. Ain't, ain't, ain't nobody. The Bible says what? That if Christ be not risen, Paul said we of a people are most miserable. We got to believe that Jesus Christ, man, he's alive. He, it may, he may not feel alive. He may not look alive. He may not sound alive. But baby, he is alive. And you got to know he's got your future. You can't take new old worries into new seasons either. Somebody need to hear that. Number three, what will happen here? This new season or this new year is designed to produce, say this with me, more than conquerors. The Bible says huh, huh, that it identifies us as being more than a conqueror. 
And, and in my little limited intellect, in my little limited intellect, it, it's, I can't see it in a natural sense how I could be. Sometimes I don't see myself as a conqueror. And if I can't see myself as a conqueror, it's going to be hard for me to see myself as more than a conqueror. But in being more than a conqueror, I recognize that the only way that I'm more than a conqueror is through who? Come on, y'all didn't say it like you knew it. It's through Jesus Christ. You have to understand that he has called you to be more than a conqueror, you know, through Christ Jesus. Isn't that right? But, but knowing, knowing that and, and being that are two, are two entirely different things. Turn with me to Romans 8 real quick. Thank you, Father. Y'all all right? Give me a few more minutes and I'm going to get out of your way. I'm going to read this from the NIV, Romans 8, verse 31. You have it? Say amen. amen. It says, what then shall we say in response to these things? To what? Response to what things? To the things that life is going to bring you in 2019. You know? If God is for us, who can be against us? I say God's got this. He's for us. He's for every church that believes in his name and preaches uncompromised word. He's, he's, he's for that church. He's for every person. You know, and stop, stop defining yourself by what you're going through currently. Mm, I wish I had time. If God is for us, who can be against us? Verse 32, he, 32, he who did not spare his own son. Do you see that? He didn't, he didn't stop and spare, he said, you know what? He didn't say, I'm not going to send Jesus. These, these folks are too screwed up and messed up. Right? right? He sent Jesus because we were too screwed up and messed up. If we're not screwed up and messed up, then what's the point in having Jesus? But he says, he says, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us few, us, us holy ones, us, us, us white ones, us black ones, us green ones. No, he gave, it up, gave him up for us all. Oh, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Say all things. Oh. All things includes your financial well-being. Amen. Oh, I got about six amens because some of y'all can hit a choke point. Look, I'm going to tell you something. Look up at me for a minute. Let me, let me just say this. Kill this cow. We'll have steak this evening for dinner, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> If God doesn't care about your finances, he don't care nothing about you. And if he hasn't made provision for your finances, you will die sick. I didn't stutter and I didn't. You will die sick if he didn't make preparation for your finances. You know why I know that? Because you'll worry about money and you'll work over time, over time, over time for money. And you'll, you'll, you'll try to get this money, money, money thing. You'll try to get it. You'll try to get it. Try to get it. Trying to make sure that your latter life lives better than your former. And by the time you figure out that it is not within your power to amass enough wealth, you will be gone. That didn't go over very well. I don't care. Because what ultimately, if God cared about any part of you, he cared about every part of you. And he made provision for all of it. That's why he said, has given to us freely all things. Now, does that mean we don't have to work? No, you ain't. You, you're smarter than that. Don't, don't act stupid. You know better than that. But that doesn't mean you have to work at a minimum wage job when you know you got more in you than that. That don't mean you got to settle for whatever they want to give you. Not on, not, on the, not on the job, not on the car lot, not on the housing market, but you got to believe it. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me finish up. Let me finish up. It says, it says, graciously give us all things, 33, who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Huh? <laughs> It is God who justifies. He, let me skip down just for sake of time. Verse 37, he says, for your sake, verse 36, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered a sheep to be slaughtered. By who? By our enemy and by the world. But he says no or nay in all what? These things we are, say more than, conquerors through him who loved us. If he loves you, he's made you more than a conqueror. You just got to believe it. Can you say amen? amen? 
let me tell you the, the, the three types of people that I will believe that, that this is going to, what's going to identify who we are. You guys know this one real well. First type of people that are going to be, that are going to be confronted by this new season is people who resist change. Human nature is to resist change. You like your life the way it is. And even Christians and believers can fall into this, what we call ditch. Jesus called it that. I didn't. He said called it. You can fall into just kind of going through the motions. I know I've been there. Hope I never go again. But chances are, if I live long enough, I'll probably experience another ditch in my life. Don't look at me so holy. You do, too. The question is not how if you get in the ditch. Check question is how you get out of that ditch. And you're not going to get out of the ditch unless you conform, change the way you think. I don't have to stay in the ditch. Those that are resistant to change. The next one, those who tolerate change. <laughs> I just kind of, well, you know, all right, well, this is what we got to do, so I'll do it. Mm -hmm. people, we, people, people do that in churches all the time. They, co they go just because they have to or it's expected of them. You ain't getting none out of that. At best, you might get minimal results. Oh, I wish I could preach a little bit better than this. Uh, what, what happens is we just kind of we kind we kind of bump up against life's issues and we just kind of take take it in stride as it's you know okay well you roll out of the bed real no ambition no energy no desire I'm just here you know I'm showing up at work you know I'm clocking in I'm going to lunch I already got my lunch break planned I got my day planned out you know you are fooling nobody but yourself because you are tolerating change. It's good to shuffle up your day sometimes. I, 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 uh, there was a song years ago, came out years ago, by an artist by the name of Canton Jones. And the, the song, some of the lyrics say, I decided to take the day off just to spend some time with you, Lord. Amen. Just took the day off, not because I, I wanted to go play golf or not because, you know, I didn't, I didn't feel good. You know, I just heard the Holy Spirit say in the, in the lyrics of the song, I just heard the Holy Spirit say, just, just spend time with me today. That's not tolerating change. That's making a difference. Uh, third kind, those who embrace change. Good place to say amen. I'm embracing change. I, I know that what I've been through up to this point of 2018 has been difficult. There's been some victories, but there's been some setbacks. There's been some mountains and there's been some valleys. I know, I know that not everything that I desired and that I put on my wish list or that I put on my prayer list or that I, that, I, that I made a resolution to, not everything that I've asked for has come to me. I didn't get all the gifts that I wanted for Christmas. I, matter of fact, I might not have got anything for Christmas, but, but I also know that that does not define where I am or who I am because I am never separated from the love of God. I'm never without the ability to get or receive from God what he has for me for that day. And listen, if you would learn to change your, the way you look at your approach to God, he is not a genie in a bottle or a Holy Ghost slot machine. He does, he does not come up triple sevens for you, even though seven is the divine number of perfection. He does not come up triple sevens for you and you hit the jackpot, but rather you make the change that today is the day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. I will say of the Lord, he is my strength making a change. I changed the way I face today. I'm going to embrace it. I'm going to look at today as a new opportunity and I've got 24 hours in the day. One, it might not take 24 hours. It might only take 24 seconds, but those are the 24 seconds that I want to make sure that I am in the place where God wants me to be. Those that embrace change. <laughs> Last two things. What does change require? Last two things and I'm close. Change requires action. 56 years old, soon will be 57 years old, just still as a man, still learning how to make a good plan. Have relegated that to my wife so long that she looks at me like, what's your plan? And I say, you. <laughs> and she says, uh-uh. Oh, no, 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 my brother. <laughs> you, got to, you, got to, you got to hear God for yourself. And she's absolutely right. 
you know, and man, men by, by nature, most of us by nature, not everybody, are not good planners. We just kind of take it as it comes. What you gonna eat tonight? Oh, I don't know. And a woman on the other hand, and dare I say woman and then wife, but I don't wanna feel like I'm excluding anybody, but women inherently inside of them have the ability to plan and they can plan or you in circles, brothers, and you trying to figure out what color, what color socks you gonna put on. And they done decorated the whole house. They done planned the whole meal. They got, they got next week planned out all the care by nature. But see, what God wants you to do is he wants each one of us to have a plan. And you don't have to plan for it. I know there's five-year plans and ten-year plans, and I get all that. But let's just start with a weekly plan. And if a weekly plan's a little bit out of your reach, how about a daily plan? Don't just lay down tomorrow, tonight and not, but what am I going to do tomorrow? I have no idea. I'm just going to wake up, and that's how you will be conformed to this world. How do we start? We start by saying, Father, this is what this what is your will? Holy Spirit, what is your will for me today? Matter of fact, as I lay down tonight, tell me what you want me to do tomorrow and I'll get it done because you will empower me because I heard you say do this. Might be something simple. Many people want to take big leaps in God. Baby, just take little baby steps. You'll get there. My little my little grandson, Miles, look, put him on that bed, that back door. And let his mom and daddy be standing back there and he up here and they be back there. He will get to them and I don't care what you try to do to stop him. And he can't walk at all yet, but he will get across this floor because baby steps count too. <laughs> Micah, Micah 7 verse 8 says, rejoice not against me, O my enemy, for when I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. In other words, look, you might get knocked down. 2018 might have knocked you down, but baby, you just got to get back up. You got to look up before you can get up. So it's going to require action. You can't just lay in the bed and, and, and have all that God wants for you come to you. It's not going to happen. Last one is this. Your attitudes. <laughs> and I'm going to add something else to that. Your attachments. Attitudes and attachments. I'm going to tell you this. You don't have to believe me or not, but it's true. Whatever, whatever attitude you have has an attached spirit to it. Whatever attitude you're walking in has an attached spirit to it. If you've got a poverty attitude, if you've got a, got, a, got, a, got a poor attitude, I said that backwards, but if you've got a poor attitude, there's a spirit of poverty attached to it. Not everybody wants to get out of the gutter. You can take somebody who's living in the gutter and offer them a new home. But, but if they, have no, they have no, don't have the proper attitude or don't have a plan, guess what? They'll get right back in there. Because they figured out how to live life there. A lot of people want to be wealthy, but they don't, they don't want to take the steps that wealth requires. Wealth requires responsibility. If you're going to get wealthy, you're going to have to make some better decisions than what you're making right now. If you want to be debt free like my wife and I believe before, my wife and I, you know, and we both said, I'm not ashamed of it because I know good and well that it doesn't define who I am. It's taken a long time for us to get to this point. But you know what? I can't stand that. I hate debt. Because it'll try to control everything about your life. And the first thing you're going to do, if, you're not, if you haven't made the right decision to make sure that you're following God, before you write that tie check, you will write that check to that credit card or that car payment. Ain't no condemnation here. I'm just giving you information. You understand what I'm saying, right? You feeling me? You know, you get out here and the next thing you know, you're trying to figure out how you got here. But then I thought our God was a God of abundance. He is a God of abundance. But this, this new season that he's, he's prepping us for, he's making, giving us time to get our attitudes right. Because he doesn't want the attachments to follow us into a new year. Stand to your feet. I hope I help somebody. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, one, of, one of the directions of the Lord a few weeks ago, those, some of you were here last week. Come on up, Robin. Cynthia, where's Cynthia? Fisher, come up, darling. Come up. 
Pastor Lev will be up here in just a second. One of the directions and directives of the Lord was to receive communion. We received communion last Sunday. And uh, those of you that are long time, would you join her here, please? Those of you that are long time uh, uh, LifePoint attendees know that I don't, we don't do communion on a consistent basis in terms of quarterly, monthly, bi-monthly. We don't do that. I don't, I don't do that. It's not because I, I we're too good for it. It's simply because I want it to always be of great significance whenever I do that. Gentlemen, would you move that bowl? Let one of the gentlemen get it, please. Just set it over there on the table. Um, one of the reasons why I believe this is because this and what my wife is getting ready to read is what I would define as part of the restoration process for our lives. If, if, if I am struggling, and I struggle as much as you do, maybe more, because a lot of the challenges and responsibility are in my life, sometimes they feel like they're weighing me down. But I gotta, I gotta make the right decision each time, right? So I find that for me, and I don't do this as much as I used to in terms of being receiving communion at home, but I've learned that there's two things that I can do that can always put me back in right position with God. One is repentance. Probably more prominent than anything is simply simple repentance from the heart, contrite heart, contrition. I am truly apologetic and sorry, Father, for missing your, your best for me. Amen. See, you don't have to be a... a a staunch sinner. I don't know any other way to say it. Come on up, sweetheart. Uh, you don't have to be a staunch sinner to, 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 to repent. You can just miss God, you know. Should have, should have kissed Jack on the cheek and the Holy Spirit says, why'd you slap him instead of kissing him? I want you to kiss him. I'm just kidding, of course. So she goes back and says, you know what? Here, Jack, take that. Behave. Anyway, God is simple like that. He doesn't hold anything against you. So if you're struggling today, if there's anybody out here, I'm going to pray two prayers this morning. I'm going to turn it over to my wife, and she'll conclude the service from there with, with receiving communion. My first prayer is for anybody who's not born again. It's way too easy to be born again. All the difficulties have already been taken care of on the cross. Come on, somebody. The difficulty was taken care of on the cross. The Bible says they had the princes of this world known they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. In crucifying him, he brought the possibility for each one of us to be born again. Come on, are you born again this morning? If not, you're in danger of missing God's best for you. Not just in 2019, but just today. Just today. So don't be, don't, don't miss God. If you get, want to get born again, I, that's what I'm here for. Matter of fact, I want to pray this prayer. Would you, each one of you, just kind of bow your heads with me and just pray it out loud. I don't care if you, I don't care if you've uh, prayed it before a hundred thousand times. Doesn't matter to me. Just pray it with me. Do it by faith. Amen. But I want everybody to join in with me from your heart. If you do that, Father. I love you. I've missed our relationship and I want it back. Satan stole it from me. Now I want it back. Jesus paid the price so that I could be back in love with you and you in love with me. I repent and I accept Jesus' sacrifice and I call myself your child your property, your property. Only. only in Jesus name, in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. amen 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 now I'm going to ask a question after we finish here but I want to pray the second prayer for anybody who feels like somehow or another they just let God down can I tell you that you can't hold him up so you can't let him down you need to change the way you think stop feeling guilty it is a trick of the enemy conviction is genuine conviction of sin is genuine know the difference know the difference back to Shirley and Jack if, if, if Jack if Shirley were to tap Jack instead of kissing him and she knows the Holy Spirit said to, to kiss him the Holy Spirit would bring conviction not condemnation because they're a couple because they love each other and they love Jesus so he would gently say hey Shirley I don't know why I'm picking on you but you're there kiss him and that simple hearing of the voice of the Holy Spirit did you kiss him now Perfect opportunity to give him a kiss. <laughs> there you go. Amen. Amen. That simple conviction of the Holy Spirit is enough to get your life right back on course and keep it on course. Don't ignore those things. So if you feel like you've missed God, I want you to say this after me. Father, I repent for missing you. I am your son. I am your daughter. I love you. And I'm, I want to be right back where I'm supposed to be. 
in Jesus' name. If you leave that, you, you're back. If you First prayer, you're born again. If you prayed it from your heart. Second prayer, you're back in right standing with God. Okay? So we leave out of here ready to receive the Lord's Supper and communion. And we just go out here and have fun. Can we do that? And have a good new year. Amen? Give the Lord a hand of praise. Amen? Amen.